What's bonkin' everybody, and welcome to Take Your Time, a Persona 5 Strikers podcast where we play Persona 5 Strikers not in real time at all. Let's just admit it, because this is an episode of no. Reveals and Truths. <gasps> Gasp. I know. Uh, we've got a fun episode. This is a funny little thing. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to start off with talking about the format of the episode and what's kind of going on. Uh, we are stopping at the point where you can, like, you get the, like, enter the jail. Like, you already technically have entered the jail, but we're stopping before we go through the jail, both because this beginning section of this is a ton to get through, lots to talk about, lots of juicy reveals that I'm very excited to dig into, and also because we wanted to have a friend of the show, Barrett Courtney, on to talk about this actual jail and kind of the section that follows where we are stopping. Uh, and unfortunately, he couldn't make it on this episode, so we're going to have him on next episode, hopefully, hopefully, to uh, talk about it and uh, dig into that stuff. So yeah, we're splitting this up, and then probably that'll go through, like, probably by the time you get to the next city or whatever in that section. Anyway, we've got an episode to talk about today. I haven't introduced us even. Don't, My don't name's Tom Marks. Ah, oh, man, I was hoping you would go a whole episode and we wouldn't say our names. <laughs> that other person talking is Jonathan Dornbush. Hello. Jonathan. I realized I forgot to do that part. It's good. I've listened to a few podcasts where they forget to introduce themselves. And it's like, if you're a regular listener, it's like, you know, you know the voices. I don't think our voices are too similar to where it's not like a, the McElroy brothers problem where people think they all sound the same. Yeah. Which I don't, but people think that, and so it's like, I think people would know which voice is which. I think two-thirds of them sound similar, yes. That's fair. I, I, there are similarities, yes. I, I won't <laughs> ignore that, but I've, I've with listened no, to With enough. no disrespect, just disrespect no, to the McElroys. <laughs> it's almost like they're brothers, and so perhaps they have had <laughs> similar genes that made their voices yeah. similar and spent a lot of time together. Crazy. Uh, no, I love those guys. Anyway, yeah. we're not here to talk about them. We're here to talk about this- Persona. This isn't a Mabim Bam recap podcast where we <laughs> recap the jokes they tell. That's season three. <laughs> <laughs> really pivoting. Uh, this week we have the dates actually are August 18th to the 23rd, although some of that is on the high seas, some of that is very short, and some of it is very long. So it's a little bit imbalanced of a, of a week in terms of dates. Um, but we have some housekeeping to take care of first, starting with uh, our quiz from last week. So I asked, what is... The name of this cage, the cage from the Okinawa jail. Uh, Jonathan, did you have a guess or anything before you saw the comments or anything like that? Um, yeah, I did have it. Let me see if I wrote it down in my notes because I was thinking last week uh, along the lines of like, since it's the the like prototype monarch jail, uh-huh. I was thinking like something, I didn't write it. I, like something in the in the way of like, cage of like beginnings or like cage uh-huh. of like cage of not birth but like the the cage of origin or something like that yeah that's kind of where my head isn't the ca- cave of origins isn't that is that the name of something that's got if that's the name of something let me know <laughs> yeah i think it is and so that would be a reference then you know they like to reference like myth and stuff so it would work yeah yeah uh but no. no, okay, that is incorrect. We cool. did get a uh, comment at youtubecom chronology that is correct, which is Grimortal, uh, which is the Cage of Desolation, mm. because there's nobody there. It seems like they named it after the fact. Then it seems <laughs> a little, yeah, a little dicey on the naming. But uh, okay, okay, yeah. Uh, but that's the cage, so it's not a. Um, sin named cage necessarily but also that goes along with this whole section of the game as we're seeing in this week too is uh it's throwing out the script right the first three jails of this of persona 5 strikers were very like formulaic it's gonna be follow a a trend like persona 5 royal and then the this last one and this one we're just about to hit are like never mind everything's different in a really (laughs) neat way but we're not getting into any jail this week correct no we're not but even just the setup of it right is like just jumping in um we also have some viewer comments we do jonathan yes i will happily read uh these come from the uh the youtube version of the show over at youtube.com slash thank you to everyone who uh continues to write in over the weeks uh cc mac 
wrote in uh, talking about some voice actor things, but also wrote, and I just wanted to pick it out. Uh, it's funny to reiterate that Jonathan has almost made the wrong predictions on what happens next for P5 Strikers. Uh, I, I assume like has almost always made them. Uh, and having played through the game several times, I am just amazed at Tom's ability not to spoil anything in every episode, <laughs> which is great. I think it's just because I'm so thrown by what this game is Oops, in comparison to uh, Royal. Mm -hmm. That everything I assume is going to happen, at least like structure wise, like you said, it's really throwing out its structure in a lot of ways. And so I think that's really thrown me. Yeah. Um, well, also like the predictions you're making a lot of the time are are fair kind of like if you know how story structure works predictions sure. right like Zenkichi early early on in this you were like Zenkichi is either going to be your friend or the ultimate villain who betrays you right <laughs> and like the kind of answer we get is like a little like basically both to yeah. a, for like a large part of the game and yeah. then like now obviously this is it's shifting into its final form as we approach next week's episode too but for like, sure and i think it like I, one of my probably most wrong predictions was when they were talking about the trip to okinawa and they mentioned like three locations and i was like oh okay so they're gonna do a jail in each location and they don't at yeah. all and it was just yeah. kind of like well that's what you've set up is gonna happen yeah it's very classic video game structure right yeah. so i don't think any of your predictions are like wild right <laughs> they were just like this game is weird and sort of unpredictable and i appreciate it uh yeah. john also wrote in and said agree that the velvet room is simplified this time around but don't think that's a bad thing in the base game the velvet room could feel a bit cumbersome especially if you were trying to complete the compendium but the striker's approach is much more straightforward and yeah pretty much i think aligned where we are uh, totally yeah at this point the the velvet room can be very fun in normal persona if you're willing to dive into it and then at other times or if you're excited to dive into it even but there, then other times the velvet room can feel like a burden where you're going through mementos right and like your party is full and you're like i gotta go back and just clear this out again right so the the simplified thing here works really well i think but isn't necessarily like yeah it we're we're online yeah it's I, yeah, I, you're definitely right. There were times where, like, going to the Velvet Room in the original game felt like, ugh, I don't want to have to go right now and spend a long time here. Right. And not, it, I, I would say, like, to almost the opposite here, where, like, I barely use the Velvet Room. Yeah. And if I do, for it's only for, like, a minute or two. So there's probably somewhere in the middle that I think is, like, the best system you could come up with. But Yeah, yeah I for, agree. Especially for this game, I think the, the pace and time you spend in it works really well. Indeed. Well... Speaking of pace and timing, maybe, <laughs> let's jump into the dates of this week. We've got, uh, to kick things off, there was the moment that you alluded to at the end of last week's episode, yes. uh, which is just this quick little boat scene of Zenkichi uh, calling his boss and reporting back on basically saying, hey, everything went great, kinda, and there's a body now, and all that jazz. Um... And basically says, the, the, the kind of key takeaway here is that Zenkichi is like, boy, it's sure glad we didn't arrest the Phantom Thieves, right? Because then we wouldn't have ever gotten any of this stuff happening. And his boss is like, yeah, but don't get too close again. <laughs> yeah, just really hammering home the point of like, we're gonna, we're gonna make their lives miserable pretty soon. So maybe don't. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is the uh, thing you get there. But it is a moment of like Zenkichi... You know, before Okinawa, Zenkichi is, like, explicitly struggling with the idea that he knows he has to betray you. Yeah. And this feels a little bit like Zenkichi being like, hey, right, it's a good thing we didn't do that, like, trying to make the case for, like, why this sh you shouldn't betray them at all. Yeah, yeah. It definitely feels like he is more outrightly, like, we've seen him wrestle with what the commissioner has kind of told him to, like, not get too in deep with them and don't become their friends too much but he and he's tried to resist but can't help it at this point and especially now having gone through this with them i think he's very much in the friend side of things and is very much like yeah maybe it's good if we don't use them to only screw them over in the end what if we yeah. just worked with them but. also uh an important moment in this scene it started and he was on the phone on the boat and I was like, wait a minute. He said he didn't have service on the boat. And then immediately he's like, I'm going to lose service soon. But get, uh, let me like report really quick. And I was like, uh, okay. all right, you got me game. <laughs> nice. That's good. That's good. I thought you were going to say like, 
you could see the phone screen on during the call, so he clearly <laughs> wasn't calling anyone, and it all took place inside, like, one of those TV things where it's like, it's on your lock screen. You're not calling anyone right now. <laughs> no, thankfully no. But uh, we lose a day here, right? Yes. Once again, you're on the high seas for an entire couple days, and uh, August 19th goes away. August 20th, we're now back on the road with the gang. Uh, as a reminder, Zenkichi is going to Kyoto, right? To um, check back in. Yes, Zenkichi is going to Kyoto yeah. to to check back in and try to find the culprit. The gang is going to hang out at Fukuoka and just sort of enjoy their summer more until uh, Zenkichi has figured out what's going on. So you're driving to Zen- Fukuoka. Sophia says there's no jail, right? No jail detected. But Makoto's what? Just, we go to a whole nother city and no jail. Oh. Like again, last week I was coming into this being like, all right, that's where the new jail is going to be. And then we'll go to the Kyoto and then it'll all yeah. work out that. Nope. Just, nope. I wonder if there was a version of this game that was bigger, right? Like, I want, I want, not, not saying it feels like there's cut content or anything, sure. you know, like not saying like, oh, this is incomplete. I'm not, not doing any of that. Cause you know, games change as they get made. That's a natural part of games being made. Yeah. But like, I wonder if that was the intent was that they mapped out this road trip as like, we can put pl- like levels in all of these different places yeah. and then scope happened and they sort of focused it. And then, you know, we, we ended up with fewer than the cities they actually visit. It's not like the plot feels like that's the case. I just wonder if that was maybe like really early on, they mapped out this road trip and then figured out where they were actually going to use jails. For sure. Especially I think just because the first like 20 hours of the game or whatever, 15 hours set up so much. The idea of like, you go to new place, there is a jail, go to new place, jail. And like, to be fair. And that was one of my like earlier criticisms was that that routine was starting to feel a little rote. And, Mm -hmm. um, the, as much as I was enjoying the story, the variety of like getting into the jail wasn't as thrilling as like the first one, um, you know, and experiencing everything new. So I think it, it worked out for the best if that was at some point the plan. And if not, you know, then it was never the plan. But I think especially by changing up the pacing with the last jail in particular, it has also just really boosted the flow of the game for me in a lot of ways. Yeah, totally. I'm glad to hear that too. Uh, Anyway, uh, Makoto's back starts hurting lower back from driving too much a, a classic road trip problem i wouldn't know uh, i can't drive <laughs> and they decide to stay the night at fukuoka uh basically just to recover right give her a chance to rest because the only other driver once again is haru and every time they bring up haru driving uh makoto acts like she's seen a ghost basically um <laughs> Yeah, they really they really lay it out that like Haru should not drive. It's like Chekhov's driver at this point. Like, <laughs> yeah, and we, well, we find out why, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, cut to basically that night. They're having dinner at this uh, sort of food stalls. They're all having ramen and noodles, and it's it's very adorable. There's a very important moment at this dinner, which is that Morgana sort of admits that he's a cat. Oh, I don't think I wrote that down. Yeah, Morgana is like, uh, Joker offers, you can, you can offer Joker, that's what it is. Joker can offer to give some of the soup and basically says it's really hot. Mm -hmm. And Morgana says, can you blow on it first? The feline tongue is very sensitive. Mm. And then Ryuji is like, oh, you finally admit you're a cat, eh? And then Morgana does not respond to that. So big, that's the big revelation you were hinting at. That's the truth that has been revealed. Yeah. Exactly. That and now the show is over. Thank you everyone so much for listening. <laughs> that's all we wanted to get to this week. Uh no, I didn't write that down, but yeah, that's there's definitely a few moments here where I think Morgana is more okay with being a cat in this game than yeah. in the first one for sure. And it might just be a time thing, like it might just be they've spent so yeah. much time now as a cat, but yeah, that's definitely a thing that's happened here. Also, I got to say all these food stalls and all that. I, this is not a big point, but again, I was like, "Oh, this will be a place we go explore, and we'll like go to the different <laughs> stalls and buy food from them and get a recipe or two. None of them. Yeah. Uh, well, isn't there? Is this the part where they like go? This is also the part right before they go to the food stalls. They go to like some location. I can't remember the name of it. Or was this a different? Was that last week? So 
I think that we grab food after finding the hotel and it's like a bunch of the cool food stalls, like you were saying. Um, Yeah, Makoto's not feeling well. We're going to rest and then call Zenkichi. We get like seven noodle noodle refills right at this point. okay yeah yeah, yeah. Th- th- oh. this is so i'm, I'm misremembering excuse yeah. me i apologize no you're good um so that that happens they have dinner they decide to stay the night and they decide to stay an extra or they've already stayed the night right no they're, they're just yet. gonna stay okay. one night and they've decided they're gonna stay two nights they're gonna explore this town right have a little nice time uh and and then immediately almost Zenkichi calls and says, hey, I already found the guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they're like, oh, well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, he says, come to Kyoto right away. I found the mastermind. I'll tell you when you're here. And they say, oh, well, Makoto's out of commission. He says, well, why can't Haru drive? And they get into a little tiff. And then Makoto says, I'm going to push through it. And then the next day, they are hitting the road, um, and Haru says, "Oh, it's a- it's eight hours away. Kyoto is eight hours away by highway. And, so the fastest yeah. route is eight hours. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Makoto says she still isn't feeling well. So Haru says, "You know what? I'm stepping up and I'm taking over. And this is where we get the moment where like it turns out that Haru isn't a bad driver, quote unquote." She is like a race car, crazy, fast, insane, reckless driver. Yeah, she says she has a special technique, I think, at some point for her yeah. driving, which is scary to say. And Mako- Makoto says, I forgot to tell you guys, the moment Haru's hands touch the wheel, and then it kind of goes dot, 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 and she just is like a different person. Yeah. yeah um, uh, it's really funny, and, and I like that they play it off, mostly off screen. You know. Yeah. Well, the you get the you get the road trip like the when it jumps to the date screen, the car right, which is usually just driving along, is like doing flips and there's yeah. like tires screeching noises. It's really cute. And then yeah, you get to the next location, uh, and, and you hear the noise basically of them arriving. Yeah, basically a crash. Yep. Yeah, a good way, a good way to arrive. Uh, and you arrive at this place that Zenkichi essentially describes as, like, his safe house. It's, like, a little bar. It's very LeBlanc vibes, right? Yeah, it's it's like cool. a downstairs bar. Yeah. I like it a lot. He's got one of those classic police boards with strings all over it and notes. Um, and everyone is a disaster because they, they like... Except for Haru. Just, Haru is yeah. fun. Haru acts like nothing has happened. Yeah, she's just standing there chilling. All of them are like holding their sides ready to die. <laughs> yeah. And she's For just eight like, hours. This is fine. Yeah, like my God. I don't Although even... the implication is that they got there way quicker than that because the, the time thing still says noon. True. <laughs> so yeah. it's the implication is that they got there like in six probably. <laughs> I mean, with the speed with which it sounds like she was driving, I think that's very fair at this point. But yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they get Very to good bit. Bar. Yeah, it's cute. It's very cute. Um, there's a kind of little throwaway thing right here, there where there's like old newspapers stacked in the corner from two years ago. And Yusuke kind of brings up that they're from two years ago. And then Zinkichi's like, nothing. Don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. And like brushes it off. Um, and then we get into the... Not... I mean, I guess it is kind of exposition dump, but it doesn't really feel like dry necessarily. It's a lot of plot all at once and a lot of reveals. Yeah. Starting with the most important of them, which is that Zenkichi says that the big bad mastermind, the person connecting all of these change of heart targets on this list they found in Okinawa is a guy named Jun Owada, who is a cabinet member uh, who supported Shido... Which is a super cool way to tie it into the first game. Yeah, I really appreciated that. I like, they, uh, you know, obviously we're getting a, a decent chunk into the game at this point, And is, is theoretically, this is the dude behind it all. And so right. to kind of just lay that all out at this point, it could lack some weight. So I think tying it into obviously who was such a big bad last time, um, I think also just setting up his like, oh, this is his, like, 10th term in legislature. Like, he is an old kind of hat at this stuff. And we, obviously, if you've played five, you also maybe have some stuff on the, the political side when it comes to uh, Yoshida and his quest line. Um, right. Yoshida, correct? 
Uh, yes. Yes. And and so you just so get you're a talking sense about of the, po- the politician, yeah. Yeah, 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 the politician guy, and so it just like ties everything together well. Of like, we get we have a little sense of how things work here. We know how Shido worked, and so I appreciate that it it helps bring it in at a point where like you kind of need a reason to care about this guy beyond him being the big bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and that is that is what one of the things I was going to bring up is this is a this is a way that this game's shorter length and kind of more condensed nature suffers or at least doesn't quite live up to the way that the story is delivered in uh, the base game because one of the sort of magical things that they do with Shido, not that it's, you know, necessarily a revolutionary idea to do this, is that they seed him through the story a lot, Yeah. right? You run into him multiple times. He is really inherently directly connected to joker right and what joker is going through so there's a ton of moments where you can build him up as this important figure and junawada does not have that right he is brand new you meet him in person in like one of the next couple scenes but he is faceless for the vast majority of the game because we're now over halfway through this game yeah um, and like you said, I think tying him into Shido, tying him into kind of things you already know about is a good way of giving him a little more weight because otherwise it's not that he's not impressive. It's just that it's like, well, we don't really know anything about this guy yet. Yeah. And like, even, you know, we get the info here of like, oh, he's been meeting with Kanoe, which who we yeah. know a little bit, but even then we've only met Kanoe for like one scene at this point, And he was kind right. of set up as who I thought would be the big bad. And so... Yeah, they they need to lay a little bit of groundwork. I agree. That's it's definitely one of the the beginning of this game is so much about like trying to figure out what's going on and the mystery of that is really fun, but as a result you don't get the like the seeding as much because they wanted to keep it mysterious enough that the kids wouldn't know anything. Um, right. But yeah, you you do lose sort of a connection to him, so some of that stuff is important here. Yeah. Uh and let's get into it a little more because we do learn more. Like you said, see he's meeting with Akira Kanoe. Uh, who's the CEO of Medis. There is also a moment here where Zenkichi sort of like, when he mentions Junawada, Zenkichi has a line where he says like, who would have thought he would have shown up now? And somebody is like, oh, do you know him? And he's like, no. And it's like, okay, Zenkichi, cool. So there is a little bit. Yeah, they are seeding in maybe that there is some history there, right? It's not like he's. It's not like Junawada is just completely disconnected from the game necessarily. They are. They are doing some sort of little like maybe there's a connection or maybe something else is going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The things that they talk about in this conversation though is that probably Junawada is not a monarch because it would be really weird for this old cabinet member to be like asking all these people to a- add him on Emma and he wouldn't want to like you know if he's the mastermind he wouldn't want to like put himself in the jail or whatever like there's there's they they theorize that he's getting somebody else to do it for him and they theorize that it's probably Kanoe given that Kanoe is more of this like sort of arrogant CEO type who would want to be his own monarch or whatever and um is in charge of Medice and probably is just Owada's lapdog like that, or one of his sort of like people he's, he's having, he's working with. Um, so they, they theorize that also the other reason they theorize this is because a lot Zenkichi mentions that a lot of the hearts that have been changing on the list have been changing after the trip, a trip to Osaka, um, which is where Medice is based out of. And then Sophia kind of gets this hilarious moment where she's like, oh yeah, we already, there's our, there's a jail in Osaka. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, wait, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I mentioned it when we drove through Osaka on the way here. And everyone is like, well, if, if you said it while Haru was driving, we did not hear it. <laughs> could, we were about to die. So we could have no idea, but yeah, it, um, yeah. Which is a very funny way of explaining like why this didn't come up until now. <laughs> yeah. And especially why, like, why wouldn't the group have stopped? to go to the jail if it was so important. So yeah, it, it, right. it works well to, I think, get you moving through it to help set up like, oh yeah, clearly something's going on there. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, like you said, it's it's a lot of info that I think needs to be told and, and I think presenting it in sort of this, like here's what Zenkichi found out works well. Um, right. Because it could be just info dump of a 
and it, and it is, but yeah, it doesn't feel too like no, uh, not it, it's it's not too boring to get through in the sense. It's yeah. not dry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. So they say, well, why why don't we just go arrest him? And Zenkichi says, well, we need actual evidence, right? Uh, we can't just speculate. And on top of that, and this is kind of one of the scarier moments of this, which we also get paid off almost immediately. He says that a lot of the higher ranking people in the police department were on this change of heart list. Yeah. So they have to be really careful. This is why they're like meeting in a secret safe room of his, right? They got to be really careful about how they go about all of this. Um, but he asks you to change Kanoe's heart uh, so that they can, you know, Cut, cut the snake off at the head, basically, in terms of where these changes of heart are coming from. Um, and he's already set up a meeting under false pretenses saying Emma got hacked, right? And so he's, he's set up this meeting and he's going to go meet with Kanoe at the Medis headquarters and uh, get his keyword for them. Which I realized in retrospect is like kind of hilariously risky for him because oh, yeah. like they know, they haven't really explained in this game that like because they've had their persona transformation, they can't have their hearts changed, right? Like, yeah. that was a thing that was established in the first game. So, you don't really know if Zenkichi knows that or not, <laughs> where it's like, well, you ha don't have a persona transformation, so, like, yeah. you could get turned if you add him on Emma. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I don't think that would have come up at any point, at least that we've seen. It hasn't been intimated to him, so, yeah. It, it's right. definitely a bit of a risky thing, but I do think it's one of those, like, he... Like, we know how much he thinks corruption is kind of strewn amongst his uh, workplace, and so he kind right. of has to take that risk himself here. Yeah, and he wants the gang to lay low for a bit, right? He wants them to rest up and be at full strength, because he he knows that when it comes to changing hearts, he could get the keyword for Kanoe, but he can't actually do anything in terms of, like, changing the heart. So they need to be fully rested and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, and to that end... He's booked you a super fancy hot spring hotel. Hooray! Everything's chill. Uh, and I do think, I want to bring it up, but I do think I had mentioned to you last week, I did the, the conversion rate. Oh, yeah. For the hotel. Uh, so it's 40,000 yen a night, I believe. Yeah. Uh, which turns out to be $276. Uh, okay, $276 per person. Yeah, per night. So there's like seven of them or whatever, right? Right. Or I'm forgetting if we're counting Morgana in that number. I always forget what number does and doesn't count Morgana. But anyway, it's it's a lot for like one night of people uh -huh. staying. But per night, I've seen more expensive hotels. True, but I will point out, because I looked this up afterwards, um, the... This is getting really in the weeds and dating this podcast, <laughs> but currently the yen is super weak to the dollar. Oh, it's like, yeah. It's like 70 cents for every hundred yen. That's which fair. Is you, and at the time that Strikers came out, the dollar was actually weaker than yen. Oh. And it was actually like a hundred and I think it would have been around 110-ish yen okay. to one dollar so actually it would have been would like have been 440 dollars per person okay, per night which right. is yeah, expensive oh yeah that's getting there that's good that's but really nowadays funny. it's actually this is really getting into the weeds of that this uh, this could have been the pop quiz question would be how much would it cost yeah. the american dollars <laughs> how much would it cost? and that would be the twist as well in 2020 yeah Oh boy, economies are fun. That's what we've learned today. It's all always changing, isn't that yeah. great? Um, also, it's wild how much yen has fallen since that is, 2020. Yeah, that's quite a bit. Anyway, they go stay at this fancy hotel, and it's yeah, it's very cute how excited they are. Um, yeah, to get here, and I like that he's like, I got a big surprise for you all. Yeah, and he's like, like he's very intentionally like treating them, right? Yeah. It's 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 explicitly him sort of like doing something nice for them yeah but before we get too much into their hotel we do yeah. a little bit more on the zenkichi side of things I oh do we i have down Please. well so it's like they go for the hotel oh um, yeah it's a little bit broken up they go yeah. to the hotel they kind of get excited about the room and the food and all the menu items to your point uh, earlier there's a of, of talking huh? about uh, just to your point earlier of talking about pacing they they cut yeah. it up to keep the pacing going yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. They don't want to do this all in one big bulk thing, which I think is smart. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so they they get excited about like the bath house, the baths in it, and the 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 meals and all that stuff. There's like even a like pet shower. And Morgana gets mad about being called a pet, and then it's like, I'm still going to do it, though. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He's he's getting comfortable being a cat, whether or not he yeah. wants to admit it. Yeah. Uh, and then, yes, there's a cutaway now where Zenkichi is already at Osaka, uh, and already at the Midis headquarters, which this appointment was, like, for later that day, right? Yep. Um, and he gets ghosted by Kanoe. Kanoe said the... the front desk person says sorry kanoe is out right now on important business and can't meet with you and zenkichi is like who who stands up the police that's wild yeah he i think it's like both here and a little bit later but like he is appalled that this man would would stand him up and it's so funny how angry he is about it and then it's like well we're about to find out why yeah uh then again breaking up the pacing Mm because this is all sort of intercut nicely uh you get a scene where his boss is meeting with her boss and also dun 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 junawada is there first um, introduced and as intimidating man <laughs> intimidating man yeah uh just in case you didn't recognize the photo i guess yeah um and he tells junawada says oh well i have sources who tell me that the phantom thieves actually hacked emma and they stole personal data and they steal dirt on people, and then they blackmail them into, quote-unquote, changing their heart. And that's how their methods work. Um, and her boss says, you need to arrest the Phantom Thieves right away. And basically, they very explicitly say that he wants them to arrest them also because, like, an election is coming up, and it'll make him look good if he has, like, arrests under his belt. Yeah, it, um, she's like... Uh, and and aren't, it, wouldn't it be nice to have this like on your record before the election? He's like, well, that's a bit blunt of you to say, but <laughs> yes. And it's like, you're the one who's doing it. We don't need to yeah. worry about being blunt, my dude. And her, she, she's an interesting character in this, right? Because like, we, we, we can dig into her a little bit in a minute. Cause, cause there's another sort of like character part of her that gets revealed here too, but she's sort of pushing back a little bit on this. Like she mentions like, Hey, we don't have any evidence. Right. And Junawada is like, well, you could, that's your job, is to make up evidence. Yeah. And you just need to arrest these people. Um, she said, points out it's a bad idea because the public likes the Phantom Thieves. They see these changes of heart as justice, not as crimes, right? Um, and the then Owada sort of also says, like, oh, well, you're also going to charge them f- with murder for the guy from Emma, which is how they stole all this information. And then people won't like them because they're murderers. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, very like businessman plotting, connecting the dots, trying to make this happen. And they're very much trying to push her into doing stuff that she seems resistant to in a way that like goes against housing. Kichi has described the department overall. And to a certain extent, I had always assumed she was probably part of that corruption. So it's nice to see at least a little bit of her trying to stand up for things a little bit here, obviously not going the full extent, but right. Yeah. Uh, and then she is offered a promotion and she says, yeah, okay, cool. We're good. Yeah. (laughs) All right. If you say so. Um, but after they leave, she echoes what Zenkichi said, right? She says like, She's sad because, like, in the end, she's just another obedient dog, right? Like, following whatever orders of the, her masters. Like, she's not happy about this. Yeah. Um, cut to goofy bath scene. Yep. <laughs> just as importantly, the boys are taking a bath. Uh, Morgana's <laughs> resting on the rock, which I thought was very cute. Um, the way he's It's just wild how it. many bath scenes are in this game. That's a lot, yeah. Um, but it's escalating them, which I appreciate. There's, like, a mm-hmm. weird meta narrative of the bat because obviously the last one was like them overhearing the girls and yeah. then like like oh no uh and then of course things go to hell in the bathroom. yeah and like so so let's let's break it down first because basically they're in the bath they're enjoying it and then the girls walk in and basically mention that like 
the doors are odd. Like there's there's two locker rooms that are connected, the men's and the women's locker room, and the men's should have locked right at 8 p.m. and then they wouldn't. They can just come in, but the boys came in right before that, and so they got locked in and they couldn't get back out or whatever. And now they have to. They make the decision to not disparage like for the honor of the girls or something like that right like to not like tell them that they're there and just to sneak out so that they're not embarrassed yeah which um i gotta say is there no one at this hotel whose job it is is to be like hey boys out of the out of the bath <laughs> yeah. like it's time because you could just have been in there what is this a 500 yen a night oh, hotel they don't got money for me. that <laughs> um uh yeah, it's it's a very funny, cute moment. And again, it's one of those things where I'm playing the game and then it's like, oh, the boys might get accidentally horny again. My girlfriend's just sitting right there and I'm like, there's more to the game than this, I promise. <laughs> but here's what I'll say is they don't want to. Be they're very game. good, yes. right? Like the, the definitely it was worse in Persona 5 oh, yeah. base where yes. they would just like take any chance to objectify on, right? Yeah. And there is some of that in this game, like we saw with the the, um, be- beach. the beach cut scene, yeah. right? But this scene, they are very, very much like we we need to do the right thing here. Yeah. We need to not embarrass these ladies. We need to get out of here without looking at anything, right? Like they are not they're not on the wrong side of this in any way. And I gotta tell you, I was really disappointed in this scene because like my <laughs> like my guest last week, no, for different reasons. I want to set it up that way uh, because. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a stealth section. (laughs) I thought we were going to have to sneak around the bathhouse and get away from them. And it was going to be like, they would have like cones of vision looking for you as you leave the bath. I was like fully expecting a stealth minigame here. That is amazing. Stop expecting stealth sections in this game. I'm just saying it was really like it cuts away. because the thing for me was it brings in the music of like in metaverse which is a really oh, cute yeah. touch. And so it's like, oh, we're getting in battle or like, oh, we're in trouble. And so I was like, oh, we're going to, it's going to be like a fun use of metaverse mechanics in the real world. And then it was just, it was cut. It's fine. But it was just, a, it's a, it's a small room. There wouldn't really yeah. be much to sneak around, but. You do get a fight though. You do. Or, or at least Makoto beats the crap out of all of them. Just, yeah, they obviously get caught. Uh, I like that they call them like peeping pervs and just like really, really lay in on them. Um, yeah. And we tried to tell them it was a misunderstanding. And Makoto is just like, no, this isn't a misunderstanding. This is a miscarriage of justice. And I have to <laughs> I have to correct things. Um, and I think her, she yells, uh, her back's like, feeling better. Exactly. She and they've barely been in the bath. Um, she yells like fists of justice at, at them and, and like just goes so deep into like destruction mode it's great yeah she she lays them all out in a pile Um, and then it cuts (laughs) cut to another very serious moment senkichi uh in osaka basically being like what the heck is going on uh and then there's a big news announcement on a on a giant illuminated tv or whatever above like one of those billboard tvs uh, of kanoe holding a press conference saying that he's ceasing all service of emma temporarily and that there was a hack because he's stopping service because the phantom thieves have broken in and stolen personal data and they're terrible people and they're the people behind all of this and the public just immediately turns on you right and zenkichi immediately understands that something has gone terribly wrong um so it makes sense right that like you you've infiltrated four jails at this point it makes sense that kanoe and medice have essentially noticed what you're doing and pulled the wool over on you to a certain extent gotten gotten the jump on you and are retaliating yeah totally and i mean like is the world not gonna listen to tony stark no, of course. Right. Yeah. If Tony Stark tells you there's a villain, you say, yeah, of course, where? Point me in that direction. Um, wait, wait, there's one, there's a quote. There, so you get this moment after he's done talking where, like, the you get a sense that, like, oh, the public are, is turning on you. Yeah. And they're, like, saying, like, oh, my goodness, I couldn't believe they'd do that or whatever. And there's one guy who yells, now you've done it, fandom thieves, you goofed up big. <laughs> and I, like, <laughs> lost it. <laughs> is that written by Zach Ryan? What's happened now? <laughs> I know, right? Uh, sorry very very personal aside for 
anyone in the audience. But uh, it's, uh, that is so funny. Oh, man. You goofed up big. That's like, we uh, can't, we have to keep the dialogue somewhat family friendly here. So how do we make them nice people? Yeah. Um, that's really funny. I, I, I long to know what that was in the Japanese translation and if it was just full on localization having fun with it. I hope so. But yeah, it's. It's one of those things, obviously we've seen this happen. What a, what a, I, I, almost a larger commentary on the state of, uh, public, uh, not perception, I guess to a certain extent, but like public group think, because Mm. this is, uh, this is not the first time that people have said publicly, like the Phantom Thieves are bad and everyone goes, the Phantom Thieves are bad. Um, Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of the whole point ending of the first game right exactly. is like group think leading to terrible things and and that sort of stuff yeah. or helping them um or helping them. but yeah it's just a funny thing of like yeah man people are really quick to turn on a dime for them um, oh yeah yeah which i don't think is inaccurate no, necessarily no. yeah because like especially in this day and age on the internet again not to like get so so deep into this but like it is way easier to accuse like it's way easier to be accused of something than to like remedy that accusation right it's so easy to just say like this person hacked into emma and then like that's what everyone knows forever and any sort of trying like way to try to correct that it takes a lot like people like learning bad news about people basically just like when we saw these poor horny boys defending their honor and being accused (laughs) of being peeping curves on the whip see it's all tied together it's all thematic yeah uh, parallel no, it, themes <laughs> it does it yeah it, it doesn't feel out of character for the world it's just a very interesting thing that like they've been through this before where it's like man the public just really turns on them kind of instantly yeah they do and uh you know th- there is admittedly some people in that audience like questioning it but it yeah it's pretty quick that people are like ah oh, dang that's a bummer um which is wild to me after like how much the phantom thieves went through in the first game publicly but meh who yeah. knows? That that's my only thing where like it popped up for me and I'm like, didn't didn't they kind of very publicly become beloved? And I don't think the world was wiped of that memory. Was yeah, it? but then I uh no, I think they kinda were. Okay. Cause yeah. they cause everyone in the world roots for them and then like none of that ever happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I or like spoilers only the people for who... Persona Five. Well, you know, if you're you we know. again we hope if you're this far into the show. Yeah, that you have played Persona Five. If you haven't, please go back and play Persona. Yeah, 5. so it's a, it's left a little ambiguous in that regard. I think the people who knew them remember it, like your confidants. Yeah. But anyway, that was a, a big aside. Uh, then I think Zenkichi gets a call right that basically he finds out that they're gonna get arrested or like they know he he knows they're gonna get arrested, so he runs after. He her tries to, to contact us and yeah. Yeah, he tries to he te- sends you a text message right, which yeah. is very cute. Little does he know that. You're on the floor of a bathhouse bleeding to death. Yep. I, I got to assume that's where we are the whole evening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you and get the- now a cutscene, right? Or like kind of a not anime cutscene, but like a in-engine cutscene. You get both. Of- There's a little bit of an anime cutscene. Oh, is there? Yeah. When they... It's used for the all the, the riot guards basically lining up in front of the hotel. Mm. there's like a little bit of dramatic and then like i think the commissioner stepping up and then it cuts huh. to like it, it's like very quick it's it's a weird gotcha. kind of inclusion in there so it sets up the cops are coming to the hotel to storm the hotel um and zenkichi gets there and basically is trying to argue with the commissioner and say stop it right like these you know you have the wrong people these aren't the people that doing are doing this we agreed to wait what's going on um, not knowing the stuff with Owada, right, has has happened. Um, he is basically, like, trying to stand up to her. There's a moment where she brings up his wife and says, like, hey, the system is corrupt. You know the system is corrupt. You remember what I told you when your wife died, right? Um, and the thing that gets revealed about her here is that she knows the system is corrupt too, and her plan is to make it all the way to the top of the chain so that she can root out the corruption from within. Which always works. That always yeah. works out. Yeah. Yeah. There's never um, been a time where someone plans to <laughs> fix things from the inside and then they become a part of the system they detest so much. Never. Yeah. 
Never. Never in a million years. No. Uh, and so they they do that, or that's her plan, but she's still doing this, right? She's still following these orders and she's still doing something bad. Um, but her plan is, well, if I get a promotion, then that gets me one step closer to stopping this evil. Um, so she's not, again, kind of continuing the themes of this game, not purely evil what she's doing. She has, she has other motivations here. Sure. And for someone who doesn't delve into the metaverse, I think is probably acting in a way that is understandable of someone who thinks they can fix something. Yeah, and I think yeah. I think part of that also is to show that her heart has not been changed. Yeah, that's right. Fair. Yeah. Like that's the that's at least a, the they never like bring that up specifically, sure. but like it is a good indicator that her heart has not been changed. That she's sort of like doing these things begrudgingly. Yeah, she doesn't talk in absolutes, which is often a giveaway right. if your heart has been changed. Um, yeah. But what I really do like about here of their like back and forth and and her talking about the the rotten system and and having to like exercise restraint, he, um, Zenkichi kind of realizes there's like no talking to her at this point, and he flashes back to all these moments with them, and like yeah. for me this was and like I I just think like in this moment he's like I'm a part of that group. Like, I right. think it's very much a, a, cause they kind of even talk about like, you're kind of becoming one of us is one of the flashbacks they get to. And I think it's him realizing like, oh, I'm more phantom thief than I am like cop at this point. Right. Yeah. It's him me. picking his loyalties. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it's really nice and really sweet. Uh, and he proves it out by being like, no, he yells for them to run. Yeah. And he specifically yells for them to run after the commissioner brings up his daughter, right? Yes. And says, like, yeah. you have go home to your daughter. And then he remembers the moment of his daughter yelling at him that, like, aren't saying, like, aren't police supposed to do what's right? Yeah. Right? And then that is the thing that makes him jump out and tell them to get away. Exactly. Um, yeah. And so they arrest him because that's illegal. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's the end of that day. We then jump to August 22nd, where the gang has been, did get away. Hey, Tom. Tom, what? what's the password? What? What's the password? That's not the question. No, I know, but what's the password? Um, swordfish? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I was just waiting to see whatever word you would pick up. No, I know, there's a whole little question they do. But it's just yeah. very, like, kids in a, a tree house, like. It is very hey. much. What's the password? It's password. Oh, okay. We should have thought of something better. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, they are at the safe house. Morgana. Yeah. It, the other hilarious part of this is that they do this password thing for Morgana, who is a cat. Yeah. <laughs> like. Which, like, it makes sense Morgana was sent out to go look because, you know, right. it would be the most nonchalant, obviously. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's like, who, whose voice coming out of a cat do you think it is? Right, yeah. Um, so there are cops everywhere, right? Swarming, looking for them. They're hiding in the safe house relatively well. They basically have a moment where they're like, Sh did Zenkichi sell us out? And then they very quickly are like, no, we should trust him. We wouldn't have gotten away if he didn't yell, right? So we believe, they, they trust him still. Yeah. Um, and then they immediately see on the TV that he was arrested, right? And they immediately even more trust him. And there's a nice another tie into the first game where Makoto says she'll call her sister to Sai, who is a uh, attorney, to see what she can do in terms of helping Zenkichi. Um, and that's basically all that happens here is them freaking out, yeah. right? Yeah. Wondering what happened, wondering what's, what's going to happen to Zenkichi and wondering what they do next. And then it cuts um, to Zenkichi. Yeah, and this is a really <laughs> sweet moment with Zenkichi because he's in the interrogation room and he has he literally says he couldn't even protect the people he cares most about, which is partially referencing his family, but also referencing the Phantom Thieves. Yeah. He really cares about you. He does. Is this also the part where he starts to mention that the interrogator is just beating the crap out of him? That oh, yeah, just, he does mention that. Yeah, they're just really... And it's... Total aside, but, like, uh, last week tonight, John Oliver did a thing on Law and & Order and how much, like, the interrogating uh, interrogation scenes are about them, like, beating up the people, and it's, like, not great. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, yeah, okay, so the, everyone does that, cool. Yeah, and uh, that's also, 
they i mean that's the exact same trope that they did in the first game right where yeah the the cops were like beating up and drugging joker, joker yeah right? which is wild for a teenager yeah. to be yeah but uh yeah here they are and he's like oh man those bruises are are gonna sting it's like one of yeah he, he says something along the lines of like that officer like almost looked like seemed like he enjoyed getting those hits in right like yeah. so the guy was just like getting off on it it's like yeah. it's messed up um and he says he couldn't protect the people he cares most about, which is partially, he mentions his wife and Akane, he mentions the Phantom Thieves, my heart breaks, uh, and he's sweet. just, like, really sad, right? Like, yeah. he's not even, like, he's just, he's just down, he's just sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to make um, things even sadder. Yeah, and home. then it cut, it cuts to his house and Akane, and they're getting searched, and she finds out about everything, Phantom Thieves, her dad, everything, uh through this some jerk cop who's searching her house he's like hey sweetheart why you trusting those phantom thieves they're a bunch (laughs) of maniacs don't don't like them they made your dad do all the bad things they're like such (laughs) cliche what is that voice (laughs) they're just like real it's like they're almost like mob lackey cops yeah it's just real like hey (laughs) yeah it is um it's bad, and it's also like like in a funny way. It's it's not like, like a bad like, thing. Oh game. yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you were saying about the commissioner being in absolutes, like all of these police are in like absolutes, right? Yeah. They they seem very sort of, um, just brutal in what yes. they're doing. Yeah. Uh, Akane is very sad. She after they've all left, she asks for help. She doesn't know where to turn, and she gets a little boodaloo Hello. from Emma. How can I yeah. help you? Emma says, I'll help you, which doesn't make any sense because Emma's deactivated exactly. right now. Suspicious. Mm. And then they explain and what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> suspicious for very long. It happens very quickly. We understand. Uh, it cuts to another scene. Again, like we were talking about, there's a lot going on in all of this, and I think it is not dry partially because of what we were saying. The pacing is really good in terms of how it kind of mixes these scenes together, right? Um, and Kanoe, it has cuts to a scene of in Kanoe's office now, which is the first time I think we've seen him in person since the, like, lecture. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's in his office, he's on the phone with Owada, um, and they talk about, he basically talks about how he wants to try to catch the Phantom Thieves even quicker, right? He's really, so it's like his drive to try and catch the Phantom Thieves is what yeah. the, the sort of main thing here is. He and in exchange for it, yeah. please. Oh, no, you go ahead. I didn't mean to. In exchange for it, uh, Owada is like, well, if I catch the Phantom Thieves quicker, you'll give me my own jail, right? Um, so it's a little bit different than they were thinking it was, right? They, they thought that Owada was basically just using Kanoe, and it seems like the power dynamics are not quite what they were th- thinking they were here. Yeah. Which I think is good. It would be a little too cut and dry, and I think Owada is a little too cartoonish to like really care about as the only villain at the end of the day. Sure. And and obviously, as we get in the scene, I think by the end of it, like not to jump too far ahead, but he like says he wants to cleanse the world of evil. Kanoe says right. so. Like obviously, there is more to Kanoe doing all this than him just wanting money or power. It's it's also a little bit of a good sort of misdirect because the first game is the main villain is this politician and then you introduce this evil politician who's changing hearts for his own benefit who was connected to the politician from the last game so you're like oh of course this is the 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 mastermind behind all of this and then this scene is actually like actually kanoe is sort of in charge of all of the emma change of heart stuff in a very real way uh and seems to have his own goals here um and apart uh, along that, he has this conversation with Awada, and then he basically is talking with Emma, which is like very a very Tony Stark. Oh yeah, very Tony Stark. Very like Tony Stark on a dark day. Yeah, talking to Jarvis. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and B is also just like a little weird. He's treating Emma basically like she's just a person. <laughs> well, almost like almost like an equal. Like Emma advises right. him in this scene of what to do. It's not even yeah. like. Which I found the most interesting part of it was that, like, he's not just coming up with this plan entirely. Like, Emma is actively helping him figure out what to do. Um, Yeah. And that's part of the pitch of Emma, right? Was, like, 
you can ask it anything and it will be able to come up with the best plan. So he's like using that AI to do that yeah. to a certain extent. But yeah, it is very much like they are conspirators. She's yeah. not just a tool he's using. Yeah. Um, and she suggests that the next step, which is really, really messed up for an AI su- to suggest this. She suggests that they use someone as bait to lure the phantom thieves into a jail and then they can trap them in that jail and change their hearts. Um, obviously not knowing the mechanics of... Like, th- th- this is a good moment because they... It's clear that they know something about the Phantom Thieves. They mm-hmm. know they're going into jails using Emma, so- like, and they know they can manipulate the jails in a way that seemingly Medice can't even, yeah. right? Because they don't fully... It seems like they don't have the whole picture here because they also don't know that they can't change the Phantom Thieves' hearts. Yeah, yeah. Um, But they do know that they can lure them into a jail because they can go into jails and trap them in some way. Um, So that's the plan. And then, as you said, Kanoa has this moment where he talks about cleansing the world of evil and his new world order. And you go, oh, maybe this guy is the mastermind. (laughs) Oh, yeah, as you gotta do. I mean, dream big and all. So I get it. Yeah, so he he's established as sort of like the 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 mega mind behind all of this jail stuff, yes, the, sort of more firmly the Will Ferrell mega mind of it all. <laughs> yes, um, but no, yeah, I think for me, all of this section, I I think does a good job. I yeah, I agree with you in terms of the like almost red herring, and it's not for very long, but like of Awada being the one behind it all. But to have it be Kanoe, one I think is more interesting just because we've seen him more. Yeah. And he presents himself as like it, it it is like if Steve Jobs were to have turned out to be the one creating a you know, a microchip that destroyed us all sort of thing. You know, it's it's sure. like that sort of idea. And so I think him doing this but also showing Emma uh as an active co conspirator in this is a really interesting element of it too. Yeah. That like and We've, oh, go ahead. We, we just, we've gotten hints of AI, obviously. Like, I think it's fair to say after the last jail, the implication to me was that that was Emma or some vestige sure. of Emma to some extent. And obviously the question of Sophia's origins and all that. I think having that all there, making her, making Emma more than just a tool is, is a really nice spin on it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And obviously this isn't to say that Awada is, like, gone, right? It's not like he's disappeared from the story. It's just that oh, yeah. they definitely establish Kanoe as sort of, like, the the one who is seeding these ideas of, like, world-changing stuff rather yes. than, like, Awada, who they establish as having a little bit more of, like, a uh, little bit more, like, p- selfish desires of just, like, I want to progress my own sort of... Uh, career or whatever. Yeah. Well, it's the JRPG trip. You got to fight the person for like the local saving the thing, and then you got to fight God. Otherwise, what's the point? So, yeah, of course. <laughs> got to fight God. So you have to have to fight God. Have to. Um, I, I love how much the first game escalates. Spoilers so again, I suppose, for Persona Five. If you haven't played, for... they know what they're getting into. Yeah, I know, but I just can't help but say it. Anyway. uh... That's the end of August 22nd. August 23rd, the Phantom Thieves are still hanging out in the uh, safe house that they, they were huddled up in. Yeah. Um, Makoto says that Sai is going to do what she can. She's going to do her best to help Senkichi in any way she can, but we don't really hear much more about that. And then Makoto gets a text from Akane's phone number saying that she's been taken, that they have her. Uh, and they, uh, specifically the text addresses them as the Phantom Thieves, which Akane didn't know that they were the Phantom Thieves. Yeah. So something crazy suspicious is happening there. Uh, and they know that it's probably, they, they're told to come to a certain location. And they they know it's probably a trap, but they have to do what they have to do anyway. They gotta go save her, right? Yeah. Specifically also, and I like, you know, the callback of it in terms of uh, what's happened uh character growth wise but it's very specifically like makoto believes very strongly that they need to go like she's the one who like i think advocates the most for it to be what they do yeah and it makes sense that she's the one who got the text right because she's linked to akane in that way yeah um so they go to this place uh this place called inari taisha and they immediately sophia starts smelling a brand new jail there that shows up right 
Uh, and then they get a text, or they get an Emma friend request from the Phantom Thieves, and they don't have a keyword. Uh, and Morgana points out that, again, Emma shouldn't even be working, so why is why did we get a friend request from the Phantom Thieves? And then Ryuji says something about, like, the Phantom Thieves, and that's the keyword, so they get immediately sucked into this jail. Yeah. Um, and in the jail, they hear Akane shouting out for help. Uh, and then they say, we gotta go save her. And that's when the start of the jail happens. And we're going to leave this episode on a cliffhanger, both because the show has already been an hour long and also <laughs> because we want to really dig into what's coming because there's a lot more coming uh, next week, hopefully with Barrett by our side, because uh, there's some more some more fun stuff and we'll dig into the jail and all that stuff next week. Exciting. Uh, but yeah, yeah. A, a, lot of, a lot of uh plot developments in a very quick <laughs> amount of time but yeah I oh think, yeah you know i it, mean this this section it's telling this section had not one but two different moments where in the middle of it, it said hey you want to save yeah it's been like it's been like 30 minutes do you want to save maybe it's a good time to give you a, a pee break if you need yeah it's a uh, yeah it's one of those things where i do think it's the there is an excitement to this game by the pace of it going by so quickly, like over a shorter window of in-game time. Um, but, you know, it does, it creates that pattern of like a lot has to happen all at once to keep things moving. Yeah. Which can be looked at as good or bad, but I think like in this section, they did a pretty good job of, of pacing it, of, of spacing it out, of, of pulling into yeah. plot threads. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Again, like, we we bring this up all the time of, like, what would be a week in Persona 5 is a day in this is, like, August 21st, you drive from uh, Fukuoka eight hours to Kyoto and then have that entire conversation about Junawada and then Zenkichi goes to Osaka to visit Medis and then also there's the stuff with the arrest all happening. Like, that's all one day. <laughs> That would probably be, like, a month of backstory during one <laughs> palace, basically. Yeah. yeah. It really has to truncate a lot in, in a little bit of time. But, yeah. but not that it feels bad, because, again, no, this, no. Game, yeah. this game does have sort of, like, the pace feels intentionally quicker of the story as well. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll dig into the jail, uh, reveal all of the, the surprises and twists and turns and excitements of the jail next week because there's some fun stuff in there. And then we're going to go through probably till you're at the next city and there's a nice little save point in the next city uh, is likely where we're going to go through. Uh, so that's all we've got for this week's episode. I, I had fun. Uh, should we do a quiz? No, let's not do one this week, Tom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, that's all the time oh, we've got. Oh, no, no, Tom, hit us with the pop quiz question. <laughs> so here, I'm going to be honest. Um, you stole three of my quiz ideas this week. Almost a fourth. This is the first time this has ever oh happened. Oh, my God. You've only, you've only stolen a quiz idea from me in the entire history of this show, like, twice, I think? Two or three mm. times, maybe? You did it three times this episode and nearly did it a fourth. Wow. What were the three? So the three were how many noodle refills did they get? Um, which also had a, a bonus question. I almost of, did. I said that part too. Yeah, of, of how many how many noodle refills did they need to get in order to get the charm that they give you, the bowl? That could be a bonus. Bowl. A, a yeah, bonus. if anybody wants to answer that, go ahead. Oh, you're like, I don't care. Fine. <laughs> You told you stole how many turns Jun Iwata w had been in office, which also was a bonus question of his age, uh, mm. which was sixty nine. Nice. nice. Um, I was gonna say you could have left the bonus questions for everyone. You also stole how much the hotel was gonna be per night, which I was gonna do as like how much total would it have cost them. Mm. Um, and then you almost stole what is gonna be our quiz this week. <laughs> Because it's all I'm left with. All right, fair enough. Maybe we shouldn't do a pop quiz question this week. Go for it. Jonathan. Yes. You asked me what the password is. Mm -hmm. My question for you and the viewers at home. What pairs well with curry? Almost said it, but you know, I'll leave it be. <laughs> this close. Yep. I literally only have one other one written down. <laughs> like, 
I'm so sorry. It's fine. Oh, it's really <laughs> apparently funny. they were apparently they were easy or notable answers. This well, time, I so. think it's no like to your, to that point though. You always do a great job of finding like really background information or really like small things that happen because this is such a like story heavy section with almost no gameplay that we've talked about. Most of it that you could pull from is stuff that is said or really yeah. like front of mind. yeah there's there's nothing hidden yeah <laughs> there's nothing hidden to discuss here yeah so that um, like th- it's kind of working against you right now to be fair the only thing the only thing that there was like i was thinking of also doing was there's a section where um when they do i almost i did bring this up i was right that this happens in this section is that there's another sort of like tourism moment when they first get to fukuoka they get to fukuoka station but oh, then the station, yeah. they discuss how the names of the station are wrong, and it, like, felt a little too in the weeds for a quiz, but also is, like, very much like a, let's teach you about Fukuoka for a moment. Yeah, for sure. Especially since you're not spending time in that city. It's, like, a brief kind of yeah. tourism, and then move on. Yeah. Also, just to be clear, like, I don't know if, if, if there's anybody out there interpreting this way, but, like... I love that this game sort of celebrates Japan and celebrates oh, Japanese yeah. locations in history. I, when we make fun of that, we are not at all, like, making fun of it as, like, a this is dumb or, like, they shouldn't celebrate their culture oh, yeah. or anything like that. I think it is very cool that this game has taken that sort of angle. It is just so different for a video game to do that. I think... Right? Like, for me, it, it it's just, it's cute in how blatant it is, I think, yeah. is what it is, is the part that I think we both have glommed onto or enjoy. It's definitely not a, like, oh, how dare they show that stuff off? Because, again, like, that's, no. it's a great thing to learn all this stuff. And to, like, we've yeah. had people in the comments even talk about, oh, I think I need a map to figure out, like, why, why this journey is going on. Well. And it kind of does encourage you to go look at that stuff more. But, yeah, no, it's just a funny thing where, like, typically it it sounds like product placement which is not typically a thing you hear <laughs> right. in games but like you do in so much other media but often it's for like this car brand or like subway but here it's like no just about japan and it's really cool that they do all that it's just very funny how out in the open they are of like we love this aspect of this town so much you should go check yeah. it out i mean i do want to go visit japan now so I've only been once. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. I anyway. Mean, it No, it ma- it makes everywhere sound amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to go on like a food tour of Japan oh, after yeah. this game. We should go on a Persona 5 Strikers food tour. Hey, that's a good idea. Apparently like we'll it. have to go the entire length of Japan. <laughs> yeah, twice. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's all the time we've got for uh, today. If you do have an answer to the quiz, which was once again, what pairs well with curry? Uh, and what, how, ma- <laughs> how many questions did Jonathan steal from Tom? Um, please leave us a comment, youtube.com slash darnology. We'd love to hear from you there. You can reach out to us sometimes on Spotify, right? Yes. Yes. Sometimes on Spotify. You can also sometimes reach out on to Spotify. Us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at darnology at gmail.com. I'm at Tom R. Marks on Twitter. He's at JM Dornbush. Uh, if you're enjoying the show, like subscribe wherever you want rate we appreciate all that stuff greatly especially because this month persona 5 royal comes to other consoles oh yeah that's happening yeah that's great uh welcome to october everybody and yeah that's that's a nice thing again if you're watching this show or listening to this show and you have not played persona 5 uh and now suddenly it's coming to a platform where you can again this show is not sponsored in any way it's entirely fan driven but like we highly recommend it because it's a phenomenal game go play that anyway that's all we've got thank you everybody for listening and uh we'll see you next week